Good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, depending on where you are. <laughs> um, and welcome to Macquarie University. Uh, we're going to be running a webinar over the next half an hour uh, where we're going to be focusing on uh, networking um, and telecommunications engineering um, and such topics as IoT and 5G. So my name is Fergal Cayley and uh, I'm the International Development Manager in the Faculty of Science and Engineering. And with me today we have two very important people. We have Dr. Robert Abbas um, on my immediate left, uh, who's the Program Convener for the Masters of Telecommunication and Networking Engineering. And also Dr. Rajan Shankaram, uh, who's on my far left, or your right, um, and who's the Program Convener for the Masters of IT in Networking. So let's start with a few questions and then we'll open it up to the audience questions. So, so Robert, let me start with you if you want to introduce yourself. And um, how did you get into teaching at Macquarie and how did you end up here? What was your path? Yeah, I got uh, my PhD from Germany to U Dresden uh, some time ago and uh, then I had some academic experience over there and then I moved to industry uh, jobs like uh, T-Mobile USA, Nokia USA, and Hawaii, Germany. So I had the real um, combination of academic experience and industry experience. And then I applied to Macquarie Uni and I got a senior lecture job uh, at Uni. I have been at uh, Macquarie Uni for the uh, last three years and we developed this um, uh, program, um, networking and IoT, including 5G and so on. And this course will be, uh, I will spoil, uh, I mean, get in, uh, into that later on, but uh, yeah, as, as I have mentioned, we have combination of academic experience and um, industry experience, which will help you to get uh, jobs here easily uh, later on after you get your degree. Great, thanks Robert. And I think that's a good point actually, a lot of the um, uh, academics here at Macquarie, as well as all being obviously PhD qualified, uh, many of them have spent substantial portions of their careers out in industry. Uh, and I think that's one of the things that helps ensure that our courses and curriculum stay very up to date. So Rajan, how um, about yourself? How did you come to be here? Okay, I have a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering, so I was in the power engineering segment for a while before I got a management degree, and then I picked up a few degrees in computer science and then got here to do my PhD in Australia, and in the process, I worked uh, for a few telco companies in Australia for a while, and also in Europe, in Holland, uh, for Oracle Systems, and then uh, I became an academic first at University of Western Sydney. I was part of a research group and the entire research group, believe it or not, moved to Macquarie University <laughs> as a result of which I came here as a lecturer and now I'm a senior lecturer and program director. Mm, great, thank you. So what um, can I ask you both, because I mean, you, for your respective degrees, uh, what are the kind of things that set Macquarie apart for your programs? What's what's unique about these uh, programs compared to other universities? I would say for uh, our master of networking and IoT, I think, or I'm sure about that, um, Macquarie Uni is the first one to offer 5G, not just from theoretical point of view, from practical and, and theoretical point of view, post 3GPP uh, recommendation and 5G implementation scenario because all based on 4G and LTE advanced. So, what, I mean, I would say um, we are the best um, equipped with knowledge and experience from industry. Uh, around mobile communication, 4G, 5G, IoT, real life scenarios. Mm. Okay. And Rosa? Okay, uh, Masters of Networking, which we offer here at Macquarie, is a fine blend of theory and practice. Our units cover state of the art technologies and networking, security, both from the user, engineer, and service provider's perspective. We also have an internship program where the students get an opportunity to, you know, intern 
in a real world setting in a company which we organize uh, with the cooperation of the student and there's a dedicated staff who handles the internship for the students and uh, you basically do and you also get an opportunity to work on vendors products in the lab we have some state-of-the-art simulation tools and we have networking gear which is basically from hp and cisco which the students do get a opportunity to get their hands dirtied yeah mm. that's what success is about yeah okay, if i can add to course, my uh, yeah. direction we have um, uh, online lab for uh, with nokia uh, oss uh, lab online lab so uh, students get to practice on on real on the real uh, uh, oss which is being used by industry in usa and europe and by Huawei as well the same operation uh, oss uh, uh, system which help you to analyze uh, mobile network and find out uh, how to uh, uh, optimize it and improve the key performance indicator for those networks and improve the throughput and uh, customer satisfaction. So real online, real software which is used by industry. You get to uh, practice on those kind of uh, mm. softwares and tools. Mm. Mm. Oh, well, well, I know you just mentioned software, but that rings a bell in my mind, which is uh, about the soft skills. Because I think, you know, when graduates are looking for work these days, uh, it can be quite competitive and um, although uh, obviously technical skills can be very good, soft skills play a really big role, don't they, when it comes to uh, looking for work. And are there any special ways or techniques that you help develop students' soft skills? Yes, uh, let, me, let me talk about our program and perhaps Robert can pick the cue later. Uh, is that as part of our program, we have uh, a presentation and report writing component. We teach students uh, we help students to develop their presentation skills, writing skills, and also their group work skills. And almost every unit has these components built into it. So that's uh, one. And we also have a workshop-like uh, uh, lecture mode, uh, lecture communication mode, where we actually have uh, a very interactive uh, you know, uh, sessions with the student, where the student not, is not just sitting there and listening to the lectures, but actually gets to participate in the discussions as well. Mm. So all these components have been built into the program and that's how the soft skills actually develop. And we put a great stress on the writing skills as well. Yeah. Mm. Uh, to, uh, uh, in regards to uh, Networking and IoT, uh, Master of Engineering, we have the same skills which uh, Rajan has already mentioned. Uh, uh, on the top, we, I mean, my lectures uh, in um, 5G and IoT and software defined networking all have uh, interactive, uh, interactive style questions and answers. Um, I, I talk, students talk, we both present uh, on the whiteboard and all these kind of communication and interviewing skills and uh, job hunting skills will be taught for our students. And uh, um, from my experience with these master students uh, from this year and last year and the year before, all this uh, kind of techniques which uh, are helping uh, students to get jobs, real jobs. Mm -hmm. So soft skills, as uh, Fergal said, uh, mentioned, it is very important as well as, as technical skills. As long as you, in the interview, speak the same language and the same terminology, uh, which industry utilize, you can convince the uh, uh, interviewer and get the job. Mm, absolutely, yeah. So I think that's one thing that we should emphasize here, that in the Australian system, the way that uh, students are assessed can be very different from some other countries. A lot of nations uh, still put a great deal of emphasis on examinations. Um, and, and while they are important, I mean, they're probably uh, uh, and generally around half of our, uh, our assessment grades here, we do assess students in many other different ways too, through class participation, through their group work, through uh, individual assignments, 
um, and, and some of the research activities yeah. as well. And so I would say a more holistic style of uh, learning mm. is what we have here, rather than just focusing on technology. Although the key focus is on technology, mm. but it's more like a holistic. Uh, yeah, and the reason why we do that is because, you know, I guess when you go and get a job, uh, your employer is not going to give you an exam to find out how well you're doing. <laughs> They're going to be looking yeah. at how good your presentations are, Absolutely. how good is your report writing, and those things. How confident of your <laughs> technical knowledge yeah. as well. Yeah. and communication skills and so sure. on. Yeah. So we do try to replicate what's going to happen to you once you reach the workplace. So um, <clears throat> let's press on. Um, I was wondering here, um, uh, Robert, because we were just talking a little bit earlier about, you know, why should people choose Macquarie over other universities? Macquarie has, uh, first of all, a very good ranking. Last year, uh, we had um, top 100 ranking um, in telecommunication and networking. And uh, uh, secondly, our campus is green campus, very nice campus, uh, modern campus. Uh, students will enjoy clubs, uh, swimming, uh, trees, green area. It is really a good university to, um, to study on. In. Mm. Yeah, it is it's a, a, a comprehensive university, which does mean that it uh, has all kinds of students from all different fields. Um, there are around 40,000 students here, yeah, yeah. and we are on a uh, beautiful campus, as, as Robert yeah. says, um, about 15 kilometres away from um, the city centre, uh, which sounds like a lot, but Sydney is so big that 15 kilometres, we're not even halfway to oh, the edge. Yeah, <laughs> um, and we, we're very fortunate, we've got our own uh, metro station here on the campus, so uh, we can go directly from the campus to downtown. It was a driverless train. A driverless train, no less, and uh, in about half an hour, yes. Nice yeah. technology. Yeah. yeah. It's very good. Transport, yeah. And there's also a state-of-the-art technology park which surrounds our campus. So that's so true. The Macquarie Park Innovation yes. District, where yes. we're located, it's one of the largest business districts in uh, Australia. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And students can have parking a lot easily mm. to park if you choose to buy a car. And so it is very convenient. And just to add a bit, uh, we we not only offer these courses with respect to teaching and training the students, a lot of us have big research groups also operating in the related areas. So we have the necessary research skills as well available, people who have had a number of years of research and some industry experience who've been behind setting up these programs. Mm. Right. Great. Now, what are the things that students need to do to build a career in you know, networking or telecommunications or IoT? Yeah, I mean, for networking and uh, telecommunication, uh, 5G, IoT, uh, students has first of all, to get, um, I mean, fundamentals of data science, machine learning, uh, basic communication, uh, fundamentals of 4G and software defined networking as well. So we'll have 4G one course, 5G another course, software defined networking uh, independent course, as well as we have new specialization starting uh, next year, uh, specialization in IoT. So we'll have uh, units like IoT fundamentals, IoT security, IoT for autonomous uh, systems like driverless cars, uh, trains, drones, smart manufacturing, smart mining, all this automated um, technology which is um, currently happening or starting to happen around the world. So you will be part of those uh, up-to-date state-of-the-art technology which it it helps you to find a job e easily in Australia or back home in your country or in Europe, in USA, um, around the world. And what would you gentlemen say as roughly the starting salaries that new graduates might expect in these areas? <laughs> <laughs> A tricky question, I know, but I'm sure the audience would love to know. Myself, <laughs> I was working in USA, and in USA, you're getting, um, I mean, for new graduate, 
I mean, with master degree, maybe you will get a bit more around to start with around 90,000 K per year. Um, once you get two, three years experience on the job, you can get up to 10, uh, 1,000, uh, 100,000 and 10 US dollars minimum uh, per, yeah, per year. And in USA, is, um, tax um, is not high as well, like here in Australia as well. So <laughs> this is a salary in, in Europe and in Australia is, is very close it's for, very close, for, 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 for um, our graduates. Mm. So not a big um, difference yeah. in salary yeah. scale for yeah. yeah. Western countries, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think we've, okay, we've been talking for um, just over 15 minutes now, so I think Let's um, actually go to the audience and see if we have any questions. So here's the first one from, uh, from uh, Shashank. Um, what is the difference between bachelors in advanced information technology and just information technology? Um, I mean, I can answer that one, or would you prefer to answer that one? Advanced information technology just has more computing and programming content compared to just the information technology. It is also a bit more... Uh, uh, strong in terms of mathematical exposure as well. Mm. So that's what makes it advanced information technology. Yeah. So yeah, you need to perspire a bit more <laughs> <laughs> to be able to graduate. To so you had to have probably worked harder to, to get into it in the first place yes. and then work harder once you yeah. get here. Mm. So yeah, but that is a degree, um, to put that into context, if you were an Australian uh, student graduating from high school, you would need to be in the top 10% of your graduating year across Australia in order to uh, be able to apply for advanced IT. So look, um, we obviously want to um, have exercises and tasks which are going to inspire and stretch um, those students who uh, are perhaps more gifted or uh, work extremely hard. Um, and so yes, yeah, designed very much to do that, um, to give you uh, a greater depth of learning during the experience here. So, uh, can I work part-time during the course? Uh, so the answer to that is yes, you can. So anybody um, that comes to Australia as an international student, they are given a particular type of visa which allows for limited working during the semester time, uh, which I think is stated as 40 hours per fortnight, but you could think of that as 20 hours per week on average. Um, and outside of semester time, so once the uh, semester is over and we finish the exams and it's uh, break time, then you can work an unlimited amount of hours. So some students prefer to uh, not work during semester and then work very hard during the holiday period. Um, and others like to have something part-time going all the way through. I generally recommend to students that if you've not been to Australia before, um, you've got to get used to a new place, make new friends, get used to a new learning system. Um, so it's generally better, really, if you can, to wait till your first semester is over before you really start thinking about working. And uh, remember that the primary purpose of being here is to study yes, and to okay. get good grades. Yes, because yes. you know when you're going for that graduate job, your GPA matters. Your GPA uh, matters <laughs> a lot. It yeah. is the first job, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, how tough is bachelor's in IT course? Hmm. Difficult question to answer. <laughs> if you're really turned on and you're interested in learning, then I don't think it's very difficult. It's actually a very really enjoyable experience. I, I really enjoyed my bachelor experience. I think it's the more fun part, really. Yeah, yeah. it's the more fun part. You have nothing else to worry about in life, like more pages <laughs> and family. So I think it's a great time of your life. Mm. Uh, it's like, uh, right, it's challenging. I mean, you've got to put in some hours of work every week. I mean, if you're doing three or four units, really, university is your only life. You spend a lot of time in the university. But apart from that, yeah, really, it's, uh, if you're turned on, then it should be okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think that, like, we don't set out to make our courses uh, intentionally difficult, difficult so that students will fail them. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we design them to give students the skills to oh. succeed in life and, and in their career. So there may be things which are tricky or hard to grasp, but uh, in general, I think things are fine. But what you will find here at Macquarie is that um, it's a very friendly university. So there's a lot of support, 
um, and the academic teachers are all quite approachable. So that is probably one of the differences between us and some of the other the universities here. Yeah. Uh, question here from Mohammed Faizan. I've just done A-level computer science. Will this easily let me transition into this course? Um, I would say from, from my perspective, and I'm not a computer scientist here, we generally find that the students who've done the A-level examinations tend to be some of the better prepared students for university life. And the reason for that is the A-levels go into a greater level of depth than say things like the International Baccalaureate or the uh, HSC here in Australia. So I have really a question. He says let me transition, transition into this course. Is he talking about the master's program or the undergraduate? Uh, I think he must be talking about an undergraduate, undergraduate program. That's what I thought. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then that should suffice. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, definitely. Uh, so That's from an anonymous person, how widespread is IoT for global jobs? Oh, pretty. I would say pretty widespread. Long uh, IoT is, um, as you know, is part, uh, I mean, I came after uh, 4G and 5G, uh, I mean, on the horizon. Now we have started with IoT, with 4G, uh, LTE. So as per uh, five, uh, per uh, 3GPP uh, uh, standards. So IoT jobs uh, are this, uh, by, you can find those jobs by all telecom companies around the world. Because all those companies in Australia and in, in Europe and in, in Asia and US all have implemented IoT. So they need engineers to get um, to get uh, to manage those kind of networks and um, yeah, there are a lot of jobs around IoT. Mm. I I think I mean from a layman's perspective as well because IoT is um, my understanding is really enabled by the five G technology. Four G and five G. Yeah, yeah. And, and five G just starting to be rolled out yes. now, isn't it? So yes. as I. Would, I would imagine that as the 5G spreads around the world, then the IoT will kind of float around with it. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. No, okay. because I would say it's quite pervasive already because we've been working with medical implants, you know, in the healthcare industry. Everything works with IoT protocols yeah. and IoT devices, right? Three years ago, IoT jobs started to... Yes. To, they started to recruit uh, more engineers. Yeah. Mm, okay, great. Um, thank you. And what can be the differences in the courses of the bachelors in IT and bachelors in CSE, which must be computer science, science and engineering. engineering. Um. Okay, uh, <laughs> to begin with, uh, the bachelors of IT is a three-year degree. Bachelor of computer science and engineering is a four-year degree, right? That's a fundamental difference. Bachelors of IT is not as rigorous in mathematical content as computer science and engineering. And Robert can add on to whatever I'm saying. Bachelor of IT is usually associated with computing software. There is no in-depth coverage of the engineering and hardware aspects of computing, which is, I believe, what computer science and engineering would do. You'll do units like digital electronics and, you know, uh, computer uh, architecture in greater detail when compared to bachelors in IT. Uh, and But there's a lot of programming in bachelors or in bachelors in IT. I believe there's a lot of programming in computer science and engineering as yes, well. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so now a question from Mark Torrey-Franca. Um, hi, do we also have a subject in cybersecurity that deals with perimeter penetration testing? Okay, uh, which program is he talking about? Is he talking about masters in networking? If you're talking about masters in networking, cybersecurity units are available. There, there are few units in core units in masters in networking which focus on security. In fact, security is covered in almost all units. Plus, there are optional units which under which you can do penetration testing and perimeter testing, whatever other aspects of. Uh, if I can add to this, yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, perimeter uh, security. Uh, Testing and I mean, parameter security is already dead concept because yeah. now these days you have to have uh, security end to end using AI, machine learning, deep learning. So don't worry about parameter testing. Yeah, but because we're talking about penetration testing, definitely we cover. Yeah, oh, okay. okay, but yeah. parameter uh, security is dead concept. Yeah. Mm. Okay, hopefully that answers your question, Mark. But please write to us again if you. 
uh, got anything else to ask about that. Um, let's go down to this question here. <coughs> Can um, BCA students, ah, yes, we might skip, come back to that one. Can BCA students get into the IT networking program? Uh, that's a bit tricky question. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's subjective. You got to look at the transcript of the students. But in general, yes, if you have a three year BCA degree with a good IT content, I don't see it to be a problem. Right, but in some places, I've seen some BCA transcripts which come up, which I don't think they have appropriate qualifications to get into the program. Then they are made to do 600 level units. Yeah. Okay. And then the, the other question that you pointed out here: What are some of the companies that graduates get jobs with? And um, I know it's very diverse. It might be hard, but can you think of any? Uh, yeah, famous because ones? our our intern our internship students have got into Optus. They've got into Telstra. This is historical information. Mm. They got into uh, Telstra. They've also got into Symantec. All mm. students from last year. All banks and and banks as well. Uh, so yes, uh, not only can you get into these segments, we already have students who have gone into these uh, various industry segments like banks. Telco companies, that, that companies. Analysts, yeah, you can yeah. find the jobs everywhere. Yeah. everywhere. Yeah. yeah, okay. Um, and a related question from Manish Kumar is do we have to search for the jobs um, ourselves or does the uni help us out in finding the jobs? Yeah, unfortunately, in the Western world, you have to find a job on your own. So, all what we can help you with, we can help you with networking events. We get um, to uh, events, networking events. We can uh, distribute this information to you, so it helps you to find uh, to get uh, some uh, contacts at the industry, and we can help you with interviewing skills, with what you need to know before you get the job, and what employers would like. Uh, you to do. They will not ask you calculate this or to do that or. They have uh, networks, they have IT networks, data centers, um, clouds, uh, computing, and so on. You have to be able to manage those networks um, uh, from operation point of view, from optimization point of view, day-to-day -day problems, and so on and so on. What's the most important? We all this knowledge uh, because we, uh, Rajan and I, work in this industry. We know what you will face. We know exactly to what you will face, so we will try to equip you with this kind of skills. Mm. There's also an industry job fair which we organize once yes. in a while. Yes, yes. That's, and yeah. One sure. more other thing <clears throat> that I can add is uh, it has happened with lots of our students. They've been they've gone in as an intern into a company and they've eventually been sucked into that company. Mm. So we have quite a few cases like that. That's another yeah, that's true. to get into. I mean, because I think a lot of companies, when they take an intern on, they're, they're hoping to give them a bit of a road test it's and see, see, see if it's well a again. good fit. Yeah. 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 Another question here, can I do the IoT and networking together? Oh, yes. Right. Yes. I mean, we have, we have, I don't know what you mean with this question. If I mean, we have two specializations. One, telecommunication, networking and telecommunication. And uh, that's one specialization. The other specialization, IoT. You can have you can have one unit of IoT and uh, networking um, units, 5G, 4G, and so on. Uh, I hope I have answered your questions. Hmm. Um, another question here: Can I choose electives in the Bachelor's of Information Technology? so that it will be similar to the Bachelor's of Advanced Information Technology. Well, broadly speaking, yes, yes you can. can. Yeah. Okay. You just kind of get into the more yeah. challenging things, yeah. unfortunately. Um, okay, another one here. I want to study business with networking. Can I do that? If you want to, there's nothing preventing you from doing it. <laughs> there's actually now the um, joint uh, master's degree programs that we have, which will enable you, if you're qualified, to complete two masters in two years. So we'd have to look at your background um, yeah. and your past academic performance, but if it fitted, then in principle, or yeah. I should say in theory, you can actually complete a, a business masters and a networking masters in two years. But buddy, I would say forget about life outside the university then. <laughs> <laughs> because you're living, eating, and sleeping here. Uh, yes, it's harder work.
Okay, um, somebody's asked here, um, what about the masses of information technology in cybersecurity? I can answer that, yeah. Uh, what do you want to know? In fact, uh, cybersecurity specializes in all the cybersecurity technologies which are current state of the art. Uh, you do, you look at security protocols, you look at security from the hardware perspective, you look at security testing, you also um, learn how to configure and troubleshoot secure systems. So all these aspects are covered in Masters in Information Technology in Cybersecurity. I'm talking about that particular specialization. Plus you also get an opportunity to do an intern in a company which uh, specializes in security. Mm, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, there's another question here that um, I'll pick out from, from Batsuma. In terms of employment, which one do you see as being more favorable? And this is probably an unfair question to ask you. <laughs> like, yeah, would right. it be better for them to do like a Masters of Engineering or a Masters of IT? <laughs> right. Or does it not make any difference? Or are we going to have... have well, uh, IoT, if you want, it depends upon what you want, right? If you want skills in IoT, I, I, I would say you should do IoT. If you want to gain skills in networking and uh, computer networks, then uh, you can do computer networking degree. I mean, they have slightly different objectives, although they are targeting uh, a similar market segment. Yeah. Yeah. The question was uh, Wi Fi created uh, yeah. in this uni? Yes, it was indeed. Yes, so, it was indeed. Um, it was uh, more than 10 years ago now. And, yeah, really. Yes, um, yeah, and the professors that set it up uh, established a company and uh, eventually sold it to the Americans. Um, yeah. yeah, Cisco. Cisco, yes, yeah. that's right. And, and she uh, paid around 600 million to our uni, I think. Yeah. yeah, well, I think the people who invented it did quite nicely and uh, <laughs> in fact one of one of the professors that did invent Wi-Fi is still an honorary adjunct yeah, yeah. He's, and, an um, yeah. he's actually gone to a very interesting career uh, which is about um, how to take science from the classroom and into society and Whoa. to commercialize science Whoa. so, so he, he actually um, used his uh, fortune to play yeah. an interesting role here in Australia um, another question here is the masters of coursework well designed for a student to pursue a PhD afterwards. If uh, if a student do well and uh, get good uh, GPA, uh, of course he can straight away get into master year two and uh, can go into PhD scholarship and so on and so forth. So what we have is a master's in research program. It's a two year program. The first year serves as the coursework. So if you do an MIT, it's like doing one year of MRIS. And if you do well in MIT with a good GPA, you qualify to do the second year of MRIS where you actually start working on a research problem and you have a dissertation component built into it. Mm. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to move on to, I'm not doing these in the correct order now, I'm going to go to this one. Um, what or how relevant is the course content compared to the current IT industry? I think we've answered it in we, we, we have a bit. Look, what I would add one thing to that is that you know when we create our curriculum here, curricula, we don't um, sit in a dark room and just pull it out of the air. Uh, we do actually consult with industry, um, and we have an industry advisory committee. panel and committee, yeah, 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 that we meet with regularly. So when we're designing our programs here. The content is very much what companies are looking for. And I think if you, you may be familiar with the QS company that does a lot of uh, ranking systems, they have one measure which I think is the time it takes for a graduate to find full-time employment after their graduation. Mm -hmm. And Macquarie is number one on that metric yeah. here in Australia, um, which I, I think we've always had quite good, um, how say, employment graduate employment results and, and it's because we've really been focused on what, what the employers are looking for out there. And you also just don't have the academics coming into the classroom and teaching. You have people, many of our adjuncts who come out from the industry. We also have invited speakers from the industry as well. So really it's state of the art. We mm. capture. Okay. Here's one from Manish. Um, how tough it is it is it for an average student to pass exams and um, for, i.e. for a student who doesn't like theoretical knowledge um, but loves to gain practical knowledge, would they find this a good place to be or would they find it difficult? Um, I mean, uh, this uh, particular question sounds to the engineer who knows, uh, concentrate more on, on technical knowledge. It is really good and you, I'm sure you will succeed in, in your um, professional life 
but you have to 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 take care of some fundamental theory Absolutely. as well. Yeah. But as long as you know the concept, technical concept, you will be fine. Yeah, and I, I think the same thing holds true for networking. It's a cognate degree, so that's why we say people from IT and related disciplines. Uh, it's a fine blend of theory and practice, I would say. It's uh, we we strike a balance between the two, so it should not be a challenge for a person like you. No, but I would want the student to be uh, attentive and take his study seriously because if you focus elsewhere and say that I I may not turn up to the lectures, but I'll just one day turn up to the examination hall and write my examination, then it may not work for you. You've got to be engaged. Yeah. That's it. Absolutely. Um, and um, just, I think we're about to run out of time, but there's a question here from Janathan Narendran. What is data science and what are the career prospects of doing data science? Um, I would refer you, Janathan, we've done uh, one of these actually specifically on data science earlier today, um, which will be available for viewing on the internet. So uh, I would refer you to that video and have a look there because it's 30 minutes on about. So data basically science. you're looking at databases, data analysts, business analysts kind of jobs. And there are plenty of opportunities in that segment, I would say, especially with the finance and banking industry and yeah. uh, companies such as that. And I think the last question that we'll take today is, how many hours per week does a student have to self-study for the Bachelor's of IT? Bachelor's of IT. Well, I mean, look, what we can see is that when you're a full-time student, what the government uh, expects is that you should be doing around about 40 hours a week of study yes and, and how much of that is contact hours or class time and how much is self-study varies according to what program you want and the level too so i think you'll yeah. find it at bachelor level there's more contact time in the class because you don't actually know how to study at that point of your, your life mm -hmm. and when you get to a master's level and you've done three or four years of university study you do have study skills and you are expected to be more uh, self-reliant and independent yes, yeah absolutely. so so but i would say i mean budget at least 40 hours to be spending on studying per week. And um, I think a lot of people probably do more than that. I would mm. say probably do around 50, mm. particularly if English isn't your first language. Because it will take that's longer. Yeah. yeah, particularly if English is not your yeah. first language, you've got to put in more work, certainly. Yeah. Mm. Okay, well, I know I think we're out of time. It's, it's been 40 minutes now. So um, on behalf of the panel here at Macquarie University, I would like to say thank you all very much for your time. Um, on whichever time zone you're in. And, and apologies if we haven't answered your questions. I think we got through about 90% of them. Um, and um, we wish you all the best of luck with your future. And we hope to see you here at Macquarie. Um, at Macquarie. In this beautiful campus. In our beautiful campus. Okay. Sunny city. <laughs> all right. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Take care.